Cheers, guys. I am Epix. This is episode 13 of the VR show. Thanks for dropping in. What a show we got tonight, guys. Lots to cover in the VR Roundup segment, which is the premier VR news segment on YouTube, second to none, uh, right here. And I always get a kick, guys, out of two things. First, superstitious stuff, like the episode number for some people. Are you going to use 13? I don't know if you guys have this where you live, but here in Canada, you'll see high-rise buildings that omit the 13th floor. Like, it doesn't even exist. 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. It's like, where the hell did 13 go? Elevators do that. I've seen it on airlines, even. Parking spots. It's ridiculous. No, this is episode 13. You know what? I can have a good day on a 13th. I can have a bad day. I can have anything in between. It is what it is. It's a day like any other. The other thing I get a kick out of is Epics. Why don't you talk about product X? Why are you just about product Y? And I guarantee you, I've had this for every brand multiple times over. And I always get a kick out of it because it's not my, you know, bias or anything that determines what I talk about on a given week. It's what's in the news. And if there are things to talk about on the HTC side of things or the Rift or the Sony PlayStation VR, they get talked about. And case in point, HTC Vive has pretty much been crickets the last few months. This week, three, four different stories. Um, but yeah, I've heard it for everyone. If you know, you've been around this channel for a while, it's about VR and VR only, full stop. Could care less about the brand. Sure, I've got preferences, everybody does, but I love me my Vive, Rift, and PlayStation VR. And I'm sure if I had a Windows Mixed Reality device, I'd love that as well. Okay, maybe not as much, but probably. So with that said, guys, if you end up liking this video, please hit that like button. It really helps push this video around. I'm not going to say crush, kill, or maim it. Just tap it, right? You know, a for sure tap, right? Be confident about it, but you don't have to crush it. Leave a comment below. And if you have watched a couple videos on this channel and still have yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and uh, that little bell for notifications whenever I post a video or do a live stream event. So what else do we got to talk about? Well, in the chat segment, we're gonna talk about the other age old question, which VR solution is right for you? That's gonna vary, and I'm gonna have a standalone, way more in-depth analysis version of that video later this week, but I'm confident that even with the summarized version here in VR chat, I'm going to be able to answer that regardless of where you sit on the spectrum. Maybe you're on the outside still looking in. Maybe you've got one VR solution contemplating others, mobile, tethered, etc. We're going to answer that right here. But where do we start things off, guys? With VR Roundup. So sit back, chillax, snack or bevy of choice, and let's get started with this week's VR Roundup. Growing up in the 1970s and 80s, I got to experience the golden age of slasher horror movies, those six glorious years between 1978 and 1984. Sure, they were pretty, well, damn predictable, with the group of teens getting plucked off one by one until invariably the female hero would manage to turn the tables on the hunter and become the hunter herself. Well, if you are into horror VR, Viveport currently having a massive virtual reality horror title sale underway. That's going to last through Halloween right up until November the 4th. At the start of this year, HTC launched a set of tools to help developers take advantage of the Vive Pro's front-facing cameras. Well, HTC now adding to that functionality by including hand and finger tracking that they say works natively on the headset. These will work very much like Leap Motion's technology in using computer vision processing via the cameras to understand the position and movement of a person's hands or fingers without the requirement of gloves or any other type of additional clothing style equipment. 
many of us like to think we were the only ones who had that special relationship with the prince in Nigeria. And discovering we weren't, well, kind of sucked. Bad Kickstarters feel much the same. Now, I've had a pretty good track record with backing Kickstarter projects, uh, usually by expending zero risk or as close to zero as possible, backing only those who have a track record of producing examples of said product. Well, Sixth Sense, one of the oldest virtual reality Kickstarters, four years of agony apparently coming to an end, despite an update in March that still promised the now horribly defunct controllers that used uh, magnetic tracking. Well, the latest update saying they were prepared to pay back all backers of their failed Kickstart. Now, it sounds like a massively benevolent gesture considering most Kickstarters that fail never see money returned. The difference here is Six Sense is a company very much still in operation and to further the PR disaster by not doing so, well, it probably would have been a death knell for the company. So as benevolent and kind as it seems, I prefer to think of this as really a necessity for them to continue to do business. Let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comments below. I've said it since the beginning of this channel's focus on virtual reality stuff that there would be attrition and that companies in VR and products would fall to the wayside via the pressures of market realities, market pressures. Well, add Jaunt to that list. This was the startup that once focused on delivering cinematic VR company statement saying they were laying off a significant portion of their staff. They were quick to add though that they planned on completing all contracts and pending projects having to do with virtual reality before they turn their attention completely to augmented reality. The Oculus Rift has had asynchronous space warp, you know, the acronym ASW, well, since pretty much late 2016, and HTC Vive owners, despite having something kinda similar, but not really, well, we've been asking Valve for quite a while for something equivalent. It appears that's finally happening. A new feature delivered with the Steam VR beta called motion smoothing looks like it could be exactly that. Motion smoothing apparently working very much like ASW when you're not uh, meeting 90 frames per second, which of course is the 90 hertz refresh rate. Motion smoothing kicks in automatically and will force the running game to render at 45 frames per second, then generate synthetic frames between each real frame to bring that up to kind of the hallowed 90 frames per second for smoothness. Now, of course, this comes with all the same issues that the Oculus Rift and its ASW solution comes with, like head tracking issues, lots of horizontal movement, and of course, not completely abating VR sickness. But still, it's nice to finally have this feature available on the HTC Vive side of things. To me, Samsung sometimes comes across as the hyper ADD kid that you see in toy stores across the world. No sooner seeing one toy than they're off to the next. And I say this because Samsung, despite having a monopoly where they supply the majority of virtual reality screen hardware technology, they also have a unit, a mobile solution that is in more people's hands than any other VR mobile solution, albeit with limited phone support to power them. They also have an HMD Odyssey and a new version of the Odyssey currently in development. You would think there would be plenty of things VR-wise for them to focus on with all of these listed, but no, they have another project in the wings. This, a headset that apparently will blend virtual reality with augmented reality. More on this as news becomes available. 
back when HTC first announced the Vive Focus standalone VR headset, many of us were excited. That excitement quickly turning to disappointment when we discovered the device would be available in China only. Well, good news, not only is the headset set to come to other markets in the world in 2019, also apparently will be supported with a pair of six degree of freedom motion tracked controllers as well, both of which will take advantage of the Vive Focus's front mounted cameras. So good news and like I'm gonna talk about in the VR chat segment today, if you're looking for a mobile solution, and you want something as close to tethered as possible, I would wait until both the Oculus Quest and the HTC Focus are launched and some third-party reviews and benchmarks are made available before taking the plunge. Persistence, a sci-fi horror roguelike light that completely passed my radar for the PlayStation VR from Fire Sprite Games, got a massive update today that will include multiple new gaming modes and features. And for those of you who still not have purchased this title like myself, 25% off through and including Halloween Day. I absolutely loved holding my controller firmly and throwing ropes around the screen in Astrobot. But I'm far from the only one throwing ropes around in Astrobot. I would wager multiple nations around the world have people throwing their rope around as the game has quickly shot up the ranks of special games, not just the PlayStation VR charts, but the overall PlayStation 4 charts. Here is that rare VR game that has received reviews from normally traditional pancake gaming reviewers. Metacritic has placed the title in its universally acclaimed category. This is a category that is a combination of both high critic reviews and high user reviews. As often, these do not necessarily sync up. Furthermore, Metacritic stating this is their fifth best PlayStation 4 game of 2018, that of course including all VR, all non-VR, and their number one PlayStation VR game of all time. So if for some reason you have still yet to try this but have a PlayStation VR, perhaps you have a good reason for not doing so, but I would strongly urge you to give this game a shot. Uh, you may very well like it a lot. Frontier Developments, the company behind Elite Dangerous, which while not being a from the ground up VR game, does support VR brilliantly, wrapping up its storyline for the year 2018, the Beyond storyline of course, the fourth and final chapter of that coming to VR in beta form this month. This storyline of course has to do with the Thargoids, those classic enemies from the first and subsequent titles. Well, they made their return at the beginning of this storyline. Be super interesting to see how this fourth and final chapter wraps up that Thargoid storyline. So the other age old question uh, that VR content creators get asked oh so much, which VR solution should I support? Now some channels, it's pretty obvious where their allegiance lie, right? And you can look at a channel like PlayStation VR Frank, for example, that's his go-to device, his PlayStation VR device. But, and I know this firsthand, He's just as into PC VR solutions as well. That's just kind of his preference. This channel, meanwhile, like I said earlier in the intro, it's about VR, could care less about the brand, uh, just want VR to succeed, in as much as I know there are gonna be so many brands that fall to the wayside. That's an important consideration in today's topic when we talk about VR solutions, because there are a few that I cannot, in all good conscience, recommend to you. But before we get to that, let's start off with the probably smallest percentage of you guys, those of you who have yet to purchase a VR solution. You're on the outside looking in. Now, this may be a lot easier than you think. How are you on the outside looking in? Are you a PC-centric gamer? Uh, are you 
equal PlayStation 4, PC, or are you console centric? Look, if money is no object, let your tastes dictate kind of where you go within reason, because you can't go wrong with the big three, which of course is Rift, Vive, and PlayStation VR. Now I said earlier, some I can't just in all good conscience recommend Windows Mixed Reality devices among that because Lenovo, Acer, Asus, HP, etc., Samsung. There are so many options. One thing I can guarantee you is that by 2019, 2020, that number is going to probably be cut in half because not all are going to survive. Not all are created equal. There's some options in there like the Samsung Odyssey. I'd actually be okay with that because of the higher resolution if you were into cockpit style games. But even tracking wise, you can get around those limitations because of its compatibility with Steam VR tracking, uh, HTC Vive style tracking, etc. But back to that first scenario. So on the outside looking in, if you are a PC gamer and you aren't really caught up with having the latest and greatest, you are just interested in a solid VR solution for 1080p that's out right now. You cannot go wrong with either the Rift or the Vive. If money is an issue, I'd probably lean towards the Oculus Rift. If money is not an option, you, again, you can't go wrong with either one. Each has the ability to play the other's games. And between the two, you have a massive library of potential VR games at your disposal. You've got the massive Steam VR catalog. You've got Oculus Home games. You've got a bunch of homebrew stuff that's available, free games and experiences. You can't go wrong. If you're on the outside looking in and you happen to be console-centric, well, it had better be PlayStation because if it isn't, it's not going to make a difference because only Sony has a VR solution right now. So if you have a Sony PlayStation 4 or the Pro, you are in really good stead. Go ahead and purchase a Sony PlayStation VR. It may not have the giant catalog of Steam VR, but that doesn't mean it's devoid of quality. Quite the contrary. There are some freaking amazing exclusives like Astrobot Rescue Mission that I've been, you know, going nutty about the last couple of weeks. Resident Evil 7, still in my opinion, the best VR horror game ever developed for virtual reality and probably will continue to be for some time. So that's where things stand on the outside looking in. And I guess the one more scenario covered under that bracket would be the person looking for the high-end experience. If that's truly what you're looking for while still having access to a large stable of games, Pimax probably on your radar, but I wouldn't go ahead and do a pre-order. And why wouldn't I do a pre-order now? Even though we've seen fantastic videos from the likes of Swaviver, Martin, of course, or Sebastian over at MRTV, as much as I love those guys and their content, there's an innate bias in that they were beta testers for Pimax. Yes, they called out the BS. I have no doubt of that. But they still have, despite their best intentions, and I'm sure they are the noblest of intentions, you know, leanings towards Pimax. All I'm suggesting is absolutely take those at face value, take them to heart, but wait for reviews from those without an axe to grind to substantiate kind of, you know, your gut feelings based on Sebastian or Martin's reviews. Wait for those third-party reviews to come. Wait for those third-party benchmarks. Then make the decision. Because, I'll tell you right now, if you don't have at least a 1080 Ti for the Pimax 5K Plus or 8K, you're going to want to get one or something substantially faster because things are going to, well, run okay at the best of times and meh to pretty damn bad, terabad in fact, the rest of the time. So 1080 Ti should be your minimum consideration for Pimax. Again, money being no object, perhaps you're waiting for a 2080 Ti, still going to have difficulty with some games, but yes, that much better than the 1080 Ti even and running at normal field of view, which is 140 degrees, 
you're going to be okay. Star VR, too early to tell. Some of the other, uh, like the Vario, again, still too early to tell. But if you're wanting something with higher resolution of field of view, wait. That leaves us with mobile versus tethered. Okay, let's assume you're on the tethered console or PC, it doesn't matter, side of the equation, and you're entertaining mobility. What should you run out and buy right now? I would say, just like with Pimax, just like with Windows Mixed Reality, wait. Because what is out there right now isn't the pinnacle of what mobility will be for this first generation. And what I mean by that is you're not going to get the six degree of freedom. You're not going to get the dual controllers. And in some cases, you're not going to get an option available for your region. For example, HTC Focus as an example. The Oculus Go, while great, lacks things that the Quest is bringing to the table. I would hold pat and wait for the Oculus Quest to get released. Siphon in some of those reviews and benchmarks when it does. Then, if you're still interested in mobility and a mobile VR solution, I would look at that, the focus at that point in time. They did say HTC that by 2019, they hope to launch in the West with also six degree of freedom dual controller options. So then there's the reverse, mobile to tethered. And I would go back to the first scenario let your taste dictate kind of where you're going. If you've already got the PC gaming machine and you tend to be a PC-centric gamer, if money's no object, you get, get a Rift or a Vive with a Sony PlayStation VR. If it's just PC, get a Rift or a Vive. If it's just console you want, get the Sony PlayStation VR. There may only be a year or two left tops for the PlayStation 4 platform anyways, I anticipate their next solution to make some drastic changes to virtual reality, but you'd still be good for another year or two with Sony's VR solution as is. So there you have it, guys. Uh, let me know if there were any kind of considerations that I missed, but that should cover mostly everybody. Uh, like I said, uh, you're going to be somewhere in that spectrum with one of those kind of uh, you know decisions to make. That should help you along. But again, look for the more in-depth analysis coming later this week. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the various mobile solutions, the tethered solutions. You'll notice I didn't talk about the Gear VR, even though I have one. Again, in all good conscience, I cannot recommend it based on being exclusive to really just a couple of phones. And uh, yeah, that to me does not a good mobile solution make. That's not even getting to the lack of everything else that the Gear VR omits. Guys, that's it for this episode. Hopefully, you guys have had a fantastic weekend. Apologies for being a little late. Lots on the go in real life, uh, but more content coming at you this week. Hopefully, a game. Definitely part two of the VR arcade build and the standalone which VR solution is right for you. Guys, have a fantastic one. As always, cheers.